all the time. It just keeps getting gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Amen. Say with me, tear down the walls. Hallelujah. You all, uh, let's um, be sure to keep um, Sister Virginia in prayer. Amen. Um, she's been battling. Uh, I don't want to divulge too much information, but we just declare healing right now by his stripes. Amen. How many of you received that? Hallelujah. Now, I'm just going to warn you. Tonight, uh, we're going to be doing some work. It's going to make a lot of you uncomfortable. Uh, I, don't, I don't care. I don't care. Um. The, the, the beauty is, is that if you're too uncomfortable, you don't need to do it. Amen? I'm not going to force you to do anything, but um, I have to be obedient to what Holy Spirit has laid on my heart. Our heart. I speak for pastor, too. And um, it's, one of those, it's one of these moments right now that um, God is preparing us for the rapture. Do you believe that? Amen? If you don't believe it, that means that uh, you're going to stay here. Right? You're just, you're just going to stay here. And that's between you and, well, that's just between you and God. I mean, if you don't want to go, just you, you'll, you'll stay here. Um, but for those of you who believe it and know that we're going to go, uh, you cannot explain as far as just for this short period of time what kind of changes we've all been going through. Personally with the Lord, amen. And also as far as, hey, family, and also as far as in our relationships and our marriages, you could even see an awakening in your children. I'm getting a lot of praise reports about that. You're seeing cancer go away. Can I get a hallelujah? I've had a lot of testimonies of cancer being rebuked in Jesus' name. I've had, I've, I have a lot of people tell me, you know, that the, the prayers from our church family, um, people that we visit to go pray with, healed miraculously from stage four cancer. And all this is happening because God wants to show his glory so that people who have been doubting or have been running away from the Lord are like, oh my gosh, you're supposed to be dead. And it's up to us to say, but God. Amen. Say that with me, but God. So I want, I, I want to make sure that we're, we're, we're honoring Holy Spirit because we're going to go fairly quickly. And it's going to get deep. We're going to show some things that are, are um, pretty deep on this screen as we always do. Um, However, what Holy Spirit promised is that if, if we just press in, he promised you tonight, Brother Brandon, I love you more than you love me. He promises you tonight that you will receive what your deepest heart's desire is for, whether it's freedom, amen, freedom, freedom from addiction, freedom from torment, huh? Maybe it's something, maybe it's something going on in your body. And guess what? Ain't it something that we just put up with it? Well, Father God says, not tonight. Can I get an amen? Woo, not tonight. Hallelujah. So before, uh, before I open up in prayer, I want to plant this seed. You see on that screen, this is, um, you can see the, the, the text there. This is Jericho. Um, you could read more about Jericho in uh, Joshua 5 and the later part of that. Maybe the last, uh, last quarter of Joshua 5 and in Joshua 6. Uh, God promised, God promised the land of milk and honey. Can I get an amen? amen? And praise God we live in it. Um, but this, this Jericho is an evil place. And when I say evil, it's a, it's a place where they would actually sacrifice children. That's their culture in this town. They would sacrifice children, do human sacrifices. They worshipped all kinds of demonic things. Um, prostitution at the time was the regular thing. Um, it, 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 it was a thriving town because of the position of where it was located. However, what I need you to hear is that spiritually speaking, 
it was an evil place. They wanted nothing to do with God, and it was built like a fortress, as you can see on that screen. This is as close through all my studies that I can show you as far as how Jer Jericho looked, right? And you look at this. The evil was in, but you see these walls, they, they kept God out. And what I mean by that, the walls was not only six feet wide, but the walls were somewhere between 18 feet tall up to 25 feet tall. And then you look at the perimeter of this, and you could also see there's a trench where it made it very difficult to come against that wall because there was a very steep slope, which would basically make you vulnerable because you're trying to trying to climb this hill. That's my, that's my way of climbing. I don't really climb things, right? You're trying to climb it to make it to that, and they got guards all around that are ready to shoot you dead. And why? It's to protect the evil, the blasphemy, the perversion, the rape, the murders, to protect all of that going on in those walls. And may I pause for a minute? Does that not sound like the world we live in now? Huh? I think the only one true one that could really give us a really good idea is Sarge. Bless him. Pray for our police. You were a sheriff as well. Glory be to God. Retired sheriff. Pray for all of our beloved brothers and sisters. Even those that don't know Christ. Pray for them because they see the worst of the worst, right? And so, you know, you see all this as far as what the evil that they keep in and how they're trying to keep God out. I already explained to you as far as they want nothing to do with Jesus. They want nothing to do with God. They want nothing. Of course, this is before Jesus' day. But here we are in 2022. We got to talk about it like it's a new covenant. Amen? The question is, how, how many walls do we have built up? What kind of walls do we have built up? It's easy to say that yeah, I'm a Christian. Here I am a pastor, amen? I said yes to be a pastor. But putting this together today in the, in the conviction of Holy Spirit, Father God says, I want you to list whether it's walls that I broke down in your life or walls that you're still facing right now. So here in my heart family, I'm not picking on anybody when I have this list popping up here. Don't get crunchy because this is me. This is all the walls and plus many, many more because there's not enough room on that screen of the walls that I've put up in my life. Even right now as I stand here before you to confess because God says confess your sins to one another. Hurt is a big wall. And if I don't choose to renew my mind every day in what Christ did for me, I can allow brick by brick and start having names assigned to that brick, right? Start saying, well, you know, I could, I could be hurt because this person was wrong. And I have the right to be hurt and angry. But I'm going to confess to you that's a lie from the pit of hell. Because I don't have the right if I'm truly a Christian. If I'm truly a child of God. If I'm truly one who has truly received the blood of God and I truly said, Father, you own me. You live in me and I worship you. Say that word with me, worship. You see, we're getting now to the point, it's like the days of Noah. Can you imagine when Noah was saying, come on, guys. Look, there's so much room in the boat. Come on, just get right with the Lord. Stop making fun of me. Stop calling me crazy. Please, please, this is going to happen, and you guys are going to die. You could just imagine they mocked him, called him crazy, psycho. Guess what? Hello. That's what they're saying here in this little town in Lebanon, Kentucky. Not just about me, about you too. Hallelujah, say it with me. Praise Jesus. 
Amen? Because you know what? I'd rather be a fool for God than be the smartest man on this fallen world and not know Jesus, right? It's okay to clap. It's okay to clap for the Lord. So you look. Addiction, perversion, anxiety, religion, gossip, pride, lust, gambling, double-minded, liar, con artist, people pleaser. I shared that last night at our um, I Am Recovered. God delivered me from that. I always had to please, always had to please people, right? Emotional mess, no more. Cussing, outrage, worrier. I mean, a lot of this stuff, once again, this is just Joey. Amen? Free yourself. Say it. That's Joey. Because there's some of you right now getting so crunchy. Come on, relax. All right, chill out. Okay, take a chill pill. I'm putting all my stuff up here. But I will tell you the power and anointing Holy Spirit, God has healed so many of us that were suffering from a lot of these things that are up here. And I know this because we share intimately. We fellowship. We talk with one another, right? Glory be to God. We're in Bible studies. Amen. We're in small groups, hallelujah. For those of you who just came back on a Wednesday, guess what? There's some of us, we didn't stop coming to church. Monday night, Tuesday night, here we are Wednesday night. I'm not saying this to condemn you. I'm saying just to invite you to come, amen? To invite you to come. Because you know why? It just makes your life gooder and gooder. Can I get a hallelujah? Can somebody help me out, please? Right? It just makes your life that much gooder. When you can make your priority, I'm coming to church. Amen? I'm coming to church. Well, you know you don't got to go to church every time the door is open. You keep that to yourself. I had to tell somebody that today. If you feel that way, do me a favor. Keep that to yourself. You can't tell me what to do. I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm praying you keep that to yourself. Because what you're preaching, what you're speaking is demonic. Just because you feel it's not important to go to church, don't be spreading that around. That's a cancer. Can I get an amen? amen? Right? But if you feel that way, guess what? Live your life that way. I know the price that was paid. You see, I know glory be to God because Holy Spirit teaches me. The Bible from front to back. And I know how the Father longs for you. I know how the Father is jealous over you. God Almighty, I know he's protective over you. I know that Father God makes your business his business. But you have to want him just as much. Amen? Isn't it interesting where you have a lot of people say, well, you know what, I, I, I've been a Christian this long and I just don't see God. You know what I ask him? Right off the bat, I ask him. I said, what's your worship life? Sometimes Trish beats me to it. Show, show me your worship life. Not, I'm not trying to be funny. Nine, ten, nine times out of ten, I, I get this look. Huh? Oh, I pray. Okay. How do you pray? How do you pray? Well, you, you want me to pray now? If you feel led to pray. Well, what do you mean if I feel led to pray? Does, does Holy Spirit speak to you? Well, I, 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 know, I know about Holy Spirit, but I don't, I don't talk to him. Then who do you talk to? Right? Who do you talk to? You see, you always get this where people want to blame God for things not happening in their life. Amen? But when you blame God, sis, if you want to go to youth, you want to go to youth, praise God. Honey, can you take her up there for me, please? Say it with me, man up. Man up. Say it good or woman up. Man you cannot blame God when he already did the perfect work. Is Jesus Christ not seated at the right hand of the Father? Has Holy Spirit already done been paid for? Has Holy Spirit now, is, is he living in, in people? Is he, right? Has he freed people? I mean, that's how you get born again now, family, right? So my question to you is, 
If you're not manifesting the glory of God in your life, why? Like I said, we're going to do work tonight, and this is a hard message to preach, but I thank God for it. Because it's prayers answered, and I want the best. I want the best. I don't want, I don't want to settle for a Joey's best. That's garbage. I rebuke it. Amen? I want Father's best. Hallelujah. So we're going to tear down these walls. Because just like in the example that I shared with you about people calling, wanting to be prayed over, wanting their houses anointed in oil, telling me that there's all kinds of demons and devils and all stuff. Listen, there are. But God gave us Jesus Christ so that we can have his blood that covers us and we can have all the authority in Jesus' name to rebuke every devil and every demon and everything that's not right in Jesus' name. You have that power. You have that authority. Amen? And I could preach this till I'm blue in the face, but it's up to you to believe it. You see, and when I come across a beloved child of God, because what we discussed these past couple nights is this whole world God paid for. It's not just Christians, family. God owns it all. Say his name, Lord Jesus Christ. He done paid for everybody. So it's up to a soul. Listen, this is how beautiful. This, I'm, this is how beautiful it is. Lord Jesus Christ in all his glory paid for every soul to be right with God at that time he yielded up his spirit and he said it is finished right Amen. so check this out at that moment every soul is cleansed <laughs> pastor what are you saying they didn't even have to they didn't even have to say Jesus they didn't have to say all these prayers no he forgave the entire world Talk about hitting the reset button. Amen, brother? Talk about hitting that reset button. And now God has given every soul the ability. You want to worship Lord Jesus Christ, you will live in eternity in heaven. But if you don't want to, you don't have to receive heaven and choose to go to hell. Say it with me, not me. I pray in Jesus' name that we start doing work. Can I get an Amen. Because this is what walls do. How many of you have experienced this in your relationships? Right? In some cases, this is exactly what takes place. Right? Right? This is exactly what takes place. I don't care what the color of the wall is. We put a white wall there. Right? The sad part is, the sad part is there's not even a physical wall there. It's a wall built on every deceptive thing of the devil to make you hold on to unforgiveness, to make you hold on to your pride. Well, I'm not saying sorry to you. You looked at me funny. And when you looked at me funny, you should have said sorry. And that's why I came at you that way. Trish, go, Trish can go, I don't care what you have to say. You should know better. Don't you be looking at me like that. You know it ain't good when the necks start moving and it isn't. Because tattletaling is going to come right after that, right? Say it with me, tear down the walls. When we look at Jericho, the, the, the mile, that track that's around it is about one point, here it's up here, 1.5 miles. And the reason why this is important to know, in Joshua 6, it talks about the Lord telling Joshua, go ahead and get seven priests, put them in the front of the line, and have those seven priests have trumpets, each one holding a trumpet. And then Father God told Joshua, then take the Ark of the Covenant. Listen, family, this is how detailed our God is. And I want the ark of the, I want my presence right behind those seven priests. And then I want you to put guards, one in front and one behind the ark. And I want you to march around Jericho one whole time. And I want you to keep blowing them trumpets. Can I get an amen? 
But then God also instructed, Jer- Jer- uh, instructed Joshua in this, in this um, great fall of Jericho that all I want to hear is the trumpets. Can you imagine being one of those seven priests? Because we are the priesthood of Christ. Amen? Say it with me. I am the priesthood of Christ. Amen? We're not being weird about it. We have his blood. We are his children. Anointed. Hallelujah. You have Holy Spirit. Say it with me. I am royalty. royalty. Praise God. Love you guys so much. Hallelujah. Now hear my heart. Once again, I could be blue in the face telling you the absolute truth, showing you in the scripture, the word of God. You can feel Holy Spirit and I can lay hands on you and you will feel it. But if you don't believe it, you open yourself up to start building these walls in your life. These invisible walls. And God is saying, no, I can't have that. You know that saying, no baggage? Get ready, because when that trumpet sounds, we can't have no baggage. Can I get an amen? You can't have no baggage. Baggage is going to keep you here. Right? Can't take nothing with you. I don't want nothing. Amen? I don't want So the question that I have for you is, would you go that extra mile for God? Would you walk that extra mile? Think about it. They had to walk walk one and a half miles a day. This is approximate. They had to walk around Jericho once a day. Now, they did this for six days. Many of you know this because you know this story. They did this for six days, family. Here's my question. Could you imagine after the fourth day? I mean, there's some of our church family complaining that we have service four days a week. What kind of world do we live in? I figured that people would be happy. I figured that there wouldn't be a a, a seat that's empty. Look at the world we live in. It's pure evil. It's garbage. You figure that people would want Jesus. Right? You figure that people would want salvation, would want to be surrounded by people who believe in Jesus Christ. Can you imagine after that fourth day, what kind of conversations were taking place in the camp? Man, how many, how, how many, how many more miles are we going to walk around this wall? Hey, has, has Joshua done lost his mind? Hey, Trish, can you rub my legs? They're cramping. Oh, now, now, now some of you are with me now. Huh? Like, oh, yeah, I get that, right? Oh, my goodness, I got, I, got, I got a cramp right here. Then comes the fifth day. A man of God. We're all children of God, but a man of God says, come on. Let's go, priest. Get your trumpet. We need to get here to this point in our worship so we can allow God to convict us. But there's many of you looking at me with blank faces, some of you looking crunchy. I'm not going to be moved by that. But I'm saying, where are you in your relationship with God? Will you keep on walking? Or are you the type of Christian that, you know what, I don't need to do this anymore. I know that God loves me. I'm done. I don't need to do this no more. I'm just going to go to, the, uh, to this other neighborhood and I'm going to start a church. Who else is done with this? Because I know how to worship God and I don't agree with blowing trumpets, and walking around. This is day number six. Nothing's happening. I don't really think this guy Joshua hears from the Lord. This is kind of cray-cray. So who's with me? Let's, let's go start another church. I know how to worship God. You guys, come on, let's go. Are you that kind of Christian? Whoo, be careful. Be careful. God's speaking. Be careful. Be careful. And then take it, listen to this, the seventh day. The seventh day, Father God speaks clear direction, tells Joshua, now I want you guys to march around it seven times. That's almost 10 miles, Lord. I already got these people complaining. 
grumbling. But you know what I love about Joshua as a, as a warrior? Let's do this. Are you that way with God right now? Or are you the kind of Christian that, you know what, don't tell me to walk, Lord. Don't tell me to walk. You don't tell me when I, I have to come to church. You don't tell me. Listen, family, I'm not. The Holy Spirit is telling you. How important is it for you that when that trumpet sounds, that you will go to heaven? It's everything? Because if it's everything, then when God says to do something, we would do it, right? So the grand total for 13 times walking around Jericho, that is 19.5 miles. I don't even remember ever walking that much. You? Do you? Right? Will you go the extra mile for God? Will you wait another day? Will you wait upon the Lord? There's nothing more disheartening than when a child of God, their circumstance, their situation, maybe they're not getting along with their wife or their husband, maybe their children are being rebellious, maybe the finances aren't looking good, maybe, you know, I don't know what the situation is, but there's nothing more disheartening when they get sucked back into the world and they don't trust in the Lord Jesus Christ no more. Because I promise you, if you allow the devil to deceive you this way, and you start building these walls in your heart and in your mind, it's utter chaos. And yes, God is merciful. Yes, God is gracious. Yes, he is faithful to save. Can I get an amen? amen. But hear my heart. The Bible does also teach that when you quench Holy Spirit, you will not be forgiven. And God will tell you, depart from me. I never knew you. I tried. I tried. I sent my son. You called on his name. You know what he went through. You know the power of his name. You know the power of the blood that covered you. But you allowed the situation and circumstance to start building walls. And rather than blessing Holy Spirit in worship, rather than being transparent with God and saying, I'm broken, I'm hurt, Father. I did you wrong. I did you wrong. I said something I shouldn't have said. I acted a way that I shouldn't have acted. You see, we all have this ability. Say it with me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Guess what? It's not a supernatural power. But God give you this ability to say, I'm sorry. And boy, does that sorry carry such a blessing. Well, I didn't do nothing wrong. It wasn't my fault. Rebuke that. Can I get an amen? Because if we want to play that game, I could tell you, well, I didn't nail Jesus to that cross. Guess what? Yes, I did. Right? It's pride. And we don't want nothing to do with pride. Amen? Say it with me. Tear down the walls. Here are seven deadly sins, lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, and pride. You don't believe me? Read uh, Proverbs uh, 6. That comes from Proverbs 6. The reason why this is up here is check this out. For those of you who feel led, we're going to march and walk around this building. We're not going to go outside. We're going to just march right here. And I'm going to start saying some prayers against these things. I'm going to start pleading the blood of Jesus. I'm already doing it right now. I'm going to start speaking in the spirit however you pray. But it's time. Stand up on your feet. It's time for you to be bold enough in the Lord to take your stand as the child of God that you are. To take your stand and to march around these walls. Because these walls that the devil has deceived us in, that we built, God says, I will tear them down, but you need to show me. 
You need to show me that you are serious, that you repent, and I want nothing to do with it. Can I get a hallelujah? So I'm going to just start walking. Let's just walk. We're going to pray. I want to be passing the mic to some of y'all that want to walk and pray. If you don't want to walk and pray, guess what? You can stay in your seat. You do what Holy Spirit tells you to. But in the name of Jesus, we're going to walk and we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you that through the anointing of your blood, through the power of your Holy Spirit, Father God, we come against the devil trying to come against our marriages. Father God, the devil has no voice. And Father God, as your church right now, Father, we lift you up, Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, as we march, Father God, we know that we have a built-in trumpet, Father. You gave us these lungs. Hallelujah. You gave us this voice, Father God. We are your living trumpets, Heavenly Father. And right now, Father God, we bind up Satan. We bind up demonic things, Father God. In the name above every name. In our name, Lord Jesus Christ. That, Father God, there's, there's your children right now, Father. It even hurts to walk right now. And, Father God, right now I declare healing. Dry bones come alive in Jesus' name. I declare new organs. I declare new cells. Father God, I thank you right now that the name above every name, Lord Jesus Christ, we are walking for you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that these walls must come down, Father God. These marriages are yours, Father God. Father God, we come against the devil. The devil has no hold on our children. The devil cannot speak to our children, Father God. Our children are covered by your holy and precious blood, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. You gave us the power, Father God. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, reign in this place. This is your holy place. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We call our children blessed, Heavenly Father. We thank you. We thank you, Father God. Father God, we bind up lust. Father God, we only desire you, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We bind it up right now, Heavenly Father. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we just pray right now, Lord that all this that pastors just prayed, it's going to be gone, it's going to be clean. This is a clean house, Lord. We rebuke Satan in any way that he tries to get in. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that each and every time a person walks in this building, that they feel nothing but Holy Spirit. And God, I pray that you show us and you just take care of us, Lord. God, we love you so much. And we thank you, Lord, we're able to walk. We thank you, Lord, that we're able to do this. And God, thank you for, for pastor being obedient that we will walk these walls every day if we have to, Lord, because, God, it's all for you, not for us. It's all Holy Spirit. God, please just show us what we need to do. Just go ahead and show us more. God, whatever we need to do, Lord, just show us and help us be obedient. God, I pray for every soul in here tonight. Lord, I pray for every class tonight. I just pray, Lord, that Holy Spirit is touching every person tonight. And, Lord, I just pray that Satan has no authority and whatsoever, none in this whole building, Lord. He don't have no authority in any one of us because we have Holy Spirit in us. And God, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. And we give it all to you. And all God's people said, Amen. Father God, as we continue to march, we're going to continue, Father God. Thank you, Father God. We don't have any anxiety. We're not anxious for anything, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father God, that your presence reigns within our hearts, Father God. We are not moved by anything, Father God. We have no lust in the holy temple, Father God. We only declare you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, that you have freed us. Thank you, Father, for your healing. We can feel your presence in our bones, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father God, that you have gone before us. Thank you, Father, that your angels surround us always, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. We declare right now that your temple, Heavenly Father, is healthy. Healthy, Father God. We rebuke sickness and disease, Father God. We bind up cancer and we send it back to the pits of hell where it belongs, Heavenly Father. We cast everything out that does not belong, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Father God, for new bones, hallelujah, new muscles, new organs, Heavenly Father. We don't limit you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father God, thank you. We rebuke gluttony, Father God. We're going to take care of our temples. We're not going to be greedy for nothing, Heavenly Father. We're not going to be greedy for nothing, Father. Bless us, O Lord, so that we can be a blessing unto others, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
that you've provided every need. Hallelujah. Father God, we know right now that walls are tumbling down. We know right now, Father God, that walls are crumbling down. We know, Father God, right now that chains are being broken. Hallelujah. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for your beloved church, your beloved holy people, Father, that are taking every step in faith in you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you have us, Heavenly Father, and that you're for us because you are love. And we love you, Father, with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. We will not be lazy. We rebuke laziness, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father God. Speak to us, O Lord. Wake us up, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you all the glory, Father God. All the honor, all the praise, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Father God. We're not moved by emotion. We're only moved by your Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Father God, for blessing us with this life-changing revelation, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father God. Breakthrough upon breakthrough, Father. Breakthrough upon breakthrough, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us, Father God. We thank you for cleansing us, Father God. We thank you for leading, guiding, and directing us, Father God. And we thank you for everything you do for us, Father God. Thank you for sending your Spirit, Father God, to teach us, Lord. Thank you for going before us and casting out anything that comes against the blood of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading us, Lord, and teaching us. And Lord, we thank you for the power, Father God. We thank you for the power that you give us, Father God, to rebuke anything that the devil tries to throw against us, Father God. Every one of the sins that uh, come against you, Father God, we have the power to break it off, Father God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, we just ask you to continue to protect us, Father God, and go before us out anything, Father God, that's not of you, Lord. In your mighty, precious, and holy name we pray. Amen. Gracious, most kind Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you right now, Father God, for this wonderful time to worship you, Lord. Father God, we lay all of our walls down at your feet, Father God. Father God, we rebuke any and everything that is from Satan, Father God. Father God, we just ask blessings upon blessings upon this church, Lord, that you guide us and you let us grow, Father God, in your word. Father God, we stand tall for you. We stand in line for you, Father God. And we know, Father God, that one day we'll be in your presence, Lord. Father God, lift us up, watch over us, and guide us, and keep us all safe, Lord, in your precious holy name. Your heavenly Father, every lie everyone's been told by the enemy, I pray that they be regurgitated in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. Who we'll only believe what you say we are, Lord God, in the holy, precious name of Jesus. all had pride, leaks of pride, so we can uh, repent of our sins, so we can always have the Lord beside our side. Lord, we ask to wash us clean, Lord, and all of our mighty sins may need to be buried, may it be lust, glutton, greed, sloth, wealth, 
envy, pride, whatever it may be, Lord, get rid of it, distinguish it, that all the souls in this building be cleansed, Lord. We ask this in your mighty name, Lord, because there's no other God other than you. We all need you in this house, Lord. We need you to feel your presence. We need to have your in our heart and our soul and our mind. Lord, there's no one that I can possibly share but you. You are my Lord, and there's nothing I shall want. Father, we lift up the people that's come into our house and then gone out. We lift up every soul that's ever walked into this church, God, and felt Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit power, that they will be back here, God. They're part of our body. We want them back, Lord. We declare in Jesus' name, Lord, that you're going to bring them back. The ones you want back here, God, bring them back. God, touch our bodies. Help us, Lord, to recognize the devil's the way he tries to come against us. Help us recognize those spirits, God. Give us your discernment. So when lies want to, we want to lie, God, that we will immediately say, no, that's not my Lord. He don't like that. And when we want to get angry, God, that you'll say, no, don't do that, Kay. God, I don't like that, Kay. You're not glorifying me. You got to glorify me if you want to be with me. I want to be with Jesus. I want everybody I love to be with Jesus, everybody I meet. So, God, give us your discernment. We need your discernment, Lord, and all we got to do is ask for it. Pay attention and ask for it. And receive it. Pay attention. Pay attention. Ask for it. Pay attention and receive it. Let us love you, God. Let us love each other. Show us your power, God, through each other, Lord. You put us here to take care of each other, Lord. Not just ourselves, but each other. We're to take care of each other, God, when we see each other hurting. So what we have to do is lift them up to you. Father, I just ask you personally, Lord, that you would allow me to be the person, God. Help me recognize Satan as he comes against me. Help me, Lord. And I know you will. Because you're not a God that leaves us alone. You're a God that lives in us, works through us. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. I pray we go two miles for our enemies. Lord, I pray we walk three or four miles for forgiveness. I pray we uh, walk five or six miles for the poor. I pray we walk seven or eight miles for the, for the lost. Lord, I pray we walk 10 miles for so people will fall back in love with Jesus. Lord, I pray we never stop walking until the trumpet sounds and you take us home. I declare that in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray we don't become spiritually lazy. I pray we do not become mentally lazy. Lord, I pray we just keep walking for you, for your glory and for your kingdom. Bless everybody here tonight, Lord. I pray that they smile more. I pray that they walk more. I pray that they tell everybody about Jesus. Lord, I pray just a special, just lay your hand on us, Lord, and guide us where we need to go, Lord. Pray we ask for your help and your direction before we take another step, Father. Thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name. Amen.
In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And say with me, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Every wall has crumbled down in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Every wall has crumbled down in Jesus' name. Nothing can come against the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. By your holy blood, Heavenly Father, thank you for breaking down, tearing down every wall, Father God. Every deceptive thing that this devil tried, we take it right now, Father God, in all of your glory. And lay it at your feet, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. 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 Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. God not only took over Jericho, God is taking over every area of your beloved life, beloved child of God. Hallelujah. God is taking every child, every grandchild, every great-grandchild for generations to come. You are marching, you are walking for your family, for, for souls that the devil thinks he got no more in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. I'm believing right now. Hallelujah. I'm believing right now. Hallelujah. Cancer has to go. Hallelujah. Sickness, disease has to go. Hallelujah. Anxiety has to go. Hallelujah. Depression has to go. Lack has to go. Hallelujah. Hopelessness has to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It has to go in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now where you're, where you're at, stop. Where you're at, stop. And all together now, just say it with me, the name above every name, Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. And let's echo the words that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. It is finished. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Give somebody a hug, high five or whatever. Praise God. Let's get back. Refresh. I told Pastor it might be midnight. I don't even know what time it is. Y'all, don't forget to give Ben and Casey love over there. Look, Pastor already went over there. Amen. Don't forget to give them love. They got to church late, but they come from Lexington. That's why I keep my mouth shut. Well, I kind of, I kind of didn't because I said something anyway. <laughs> love you guys so much. <laughs> I don't know what Dina's excuse is, but. <laughs> what you have done for our God it's it's beyond comprehension what what you have personally done for our Lord Jesus I need you to get this <laughs> I need you to get this family Lord Jesus Christ seated right there by the Father, and you could just see tears of joy coming off of his face. <laughs> and he looks at Father God. <laughs> and then Father God says, because of you, son, look. Look at how they're worshiping. And may I tell you that Father God, his Holy Spirit reigns within us, but I'm going to tell you how our daddy is. He has sent legions of angels, hallelujah, to bless you, your marriage, your house. And I'm going to tell you right now, the miracles are already manifesting in Jesus' name. Amen. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Check this out. In Matthew 24, 30 says this, then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man. Say his name, Lord Jesus Christ. And this is coming soon, family. Coming soon. You ever drive by the theater and it has a coming soon about a movie? We're going to put that out in front. Coming soon. Get ready. Coming soon. Lord Jesus Christ, he's coming soon. Amen. 
the Son of Man, Lord Jesus Christ, coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. Can I get a hallelujah? Can I get a hallelujah? God blessed you with a trumpet. God blessed you with this trumpet. We will hear this glorious trumpet real soon. In the return of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. And in that moment, all of his people will be raptured, collected out of here. And we're going to be flying in the sky listening to this trumpet. But guess what? We also have a built-in trumpet. And in this trumpet, God is saying, will you continue to say the name of Jesus? All this ties in with the walls of Jericho. Listen up. In Joshua 6.20 it says this, when the trumpet sounded, the army shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the walls collapsed, so every charge straight in, and they took the city. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our praises to God. Amen. Say with me, Jesus is Lord. Get a hallelujah. Say again, Jesus is Lord. If God calls on your heart to come to the altar, come to the altar. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Pastor said, do it again. 